So on today's episode, we are fishing with Larry of Save Crystal River. I've known Larry for a while now, and his passion to make Crystal River better is just truly amazing. I mean, you don't see this every day of people's drive just to see things get better, especially now with the water quality issues we have all over the state of Florida. Save Crystal River is a nonprofit organization created here in Crystal River in a, in a grassroots effort in order to work towards restoring our, our native seagrass and waterways. Um, our, our waterways had become polluted with Limbia algae and, and we really needed to get rid of it in order to, to get our estuaries back where they need to be. And my role in Save Crystal River is I'm, I'm, a, I'm a board member and I help with outreach, fundraising, and community awareness. We're real excited today to be working with Captain Brandon Branch. Um, through our efforts, we're really worked to restore these waterways and the seagrass in it. Uh, the estuaries have gotten better, the bait fish have come back, and you know, because of that, the predator fish have come back too. And we really wanted to, to get Brandon involved to showcase what we've done and the fruit of our efforts. So Brandon, what's the plan today? So today we're fishing out of the plantation in Crystal River. We had a big cold front come through. It's big northeast wind, low tides. We're gonna be staying in the bay right here. And ever since Save Crystal River has done what they've done for our bay and growing the grass, and you know a lot more about it than I do, helping them out throughout the years. And uh, the estuaries and the fish are just really starting to thrive again in Crystal River. Yeah, we've, um, you know, as part of our recovery efforts here in the bay, we've, we've reinvented uh, 850 spring vents have been found. Um, and cleared. So we're getting that fresh water flow back into the bay that's been missing for years and it's really improving the fishery dramatically. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's go see if we can catch a couple. Let's do it. When Larry called me to film this episode for Save Crystal River and fish in Kings Bay, it really meant a lot to me because when I was a kid, it was a phenomenal fishery. I mean, the bass, redfish, trout, snook, tarpon, everything in between was so good. And then I slowly watched it deteriorate through the years and for about eight or 10 years, it really, our water quality was just terrible. You couldn't see the bottom, but what they've done and planted this grass and started vacuuming and opened up these springs to make that fresh water flow. I mean, you could see the bottom pretty much everywhere in the bay and it has made the fishery so much better. All right guys, so we're just getting started here. As you can see, we're right here in Kings Bay and Chris River. We have not gone far at all. We've seen a couple of redfish already and uh, we're, we're really going to see what happens in here on this cold front day. It's going to be a little bit tough fishing if I had to guess, but I think once that water warms up, we'll be able to catch a couple. Brandon, I think you saw those pipes and hoses back there where we saw that raccoon and those birds. Um, that's part of our process where we run those hoses all the way out to the, we're cleaning some canals on the south side over here. And um, in part, the process is there's a man in the divers in the water and they go through and they suck out that two to four foot of muck from the old Limbia algae that's been dead and decaying. Uh, we suck all that out, bring it all the way down to substrate and plant the, uh, the sea grasses on top of it. So you, you may have seen some of those little cages around. That's what we're doing. We, when we plant the grass, we put the cages over them so that the manatees don't eat our freshly planted grass. Yeah, it's really made a huge difference too, especially in the last four years. I mean, everyone in the state of Florida has really bad water quality issues and Save Chris River has done a lot for our bay. I mean, I've never seen it this clear. Maybe when I was five to eight years old, but other than that, it's yeah. That's what we're trying to do is we're trying to restore it for our kids and our kids' kids so that we can they can enjoy this beautiful body of water like it used to be. So going into today, I really had a plan to go catch a bunch of bass, fish the canals, and just beat the banks and catch bass but the tide was so low this morning on a big northeast wind that we really couldn't get into the canals we wanted to go to so we started on some of the outside pockets where there was little potholes in that shallow water and I was very surprised with what we saw Larry I've been fishing here my whole life ever since I was two years old and this is by far one of the biggest redfish I've ever caught in the bay I mean it is an absolute bruiser love it well let's take a picture of him yeah. You might need a bigger net, buddy. I got you, dude. He's doing what he wants. I'm telling you, he's a giant. He's a big Absolute animal. Absolute monster right here. 
giving this seven footer all it can handle right here. <laughs> well, good. Fishing up here in the bay, you really never know. Throwing a spinner bait, you don't know if it's going to be a snook, a bass, or one giant of these, red. One of these monsters. It's beautiful. You never know what you're going to catch in the bay here. I mean, it's complete fresh water. I'm throwing a spinnerbait made by Z-Man, the diesel spin, and just, it could be a bass, it could be a redfish, snook, tarpon, everything lives in here in this bay, and right now we got an absolute bruiser redfish. Love it. We catch them on a bait caster, too. <laughs> nice fish. Good pretty. Good and done. Holy! That is what I'm talking Ooh, about right there. Gee. That is an absolute hammer. Look Man. how fat that thing is. <laughs> it is a beast. Holy cow. Nice job, Brandon. Give me some on that one. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> oh my God, boys. Look at him. Look at the size of that brute. Look how fat that fish is. <laughs> He's been eating good. In the river, that Bay. is my biggest redfish in Kings Bay right there. That thing is a tank. I haven't seen stuff like that in years, and this this right here is showing the healthiness of this fish is the bay, like just what they're doing. Mm -hmm. This is what you're getting right here. That is an absolute tank. Love it. Beautiful. Look at that thick shoulders on that fish. Well, I want one now. Nice. <laughs> Got you a little splash. <laughs> Give me some. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about right there, baby. Yeah. Oh, that's a there beast. Big one. Big red right there, Larry. Oh, that's a big Be beast. easy with him. Be easy. You got light leader right there. Nice okay, one. Just stay right. easy. Go, up, go around the front. Nice one. Absolutely smoke the chatterbait. Yeah, that's a good animal. Another pretty fish. Granted. Nice one right there. Look at the color. Absolute bruiser. Fish so healthy. Oh, we got him. Yeah, all right. Woo! <laughs> yeah. Hank! Oh, yeah. Look at the color on that bird. That's what you come to Chris right there for. Things be special. Jackhammer chatterbait. Smoke it, oh. Oh. Streak Z is a trailer. Real slow. Absolutely smoked it. Mm -hmm. What a fish, guys. Very pretty. Oh my God, Larry, nice one. Thank you. So healthy. Look how fat that fish is. <laughs> oh, he's so big. Oh, yeah. So today wasn't really all about catching fish. I mean, that's always a bonus. But I really wanted Larry to teach me and all the viewers that we have what Save Christian River is doing to our estuary. And maybe it can help the other estuaries around the state of Florida, whether it's Mesquite Lagoon, the Everglades, Tampa Bay. We as a whole need to come together and learn what is working for our water quality to see that growth all around the state of Florida. The Save Crystal River project uh, is nearly completed on phase one. Phase one should be done by July of this year, 2023. Um, after that, we go on to our phase two, which is another further 89 acres of more restored waterways and canals. Um, you got to see some really cool things today. We got to see the cages in the water where we've got the grass covered up the freshly planted grass so that the manatees can't get to it. Um, once it once it gets set in there, we'll remove those cages. Then uh, we also got to see the demucking facility where we're cleaning the water and getting the muck out and the sand out. And we're turning the water back to the bay in a healthy way. I knew when we started out the trip, it was going to be a good day. Catching those two overslot redfish this morning, um, something that we have not been able to do in a while here in the bay. It was great. There we go. Look that pot hole. You got a chatterbait in his mouth? No, I actually got him on the uh... <laughs> nice trout, big trout. Oh, hell yeah. Got him on the kicker crabs, actually. That... You want to net him? Let me net him? Nope. I'm going to slide right here by you, though. Oh, that's a beast! Gator trout right there. 
Kings Bay. Look at that trout. <laughs> that is a stud for real. That's what I'm talking about. Damn. We fish this zone right here three or four times. This is our third time today. Third time, yeah. Really slowed down, put that kicker crabs on, and I was just crawling it along the bottom. And That's a beautiful bad. fish. Man. Fish for the trout right there. Mm -hmm. In the straight fresh water, trout, reds, bass, all on the same day. Gator. Nice fish. Beautiful, Brandon. Nice. We had a big northeast wind this morning. We had a cold front come through last night. Big negative tides on the outside fishing out in Ozello or on the outside islands. It really could have been tough fishing with the tides. We fished 800 yards from the boat ramp all day. We may have burnt one gallon of gas and to have as much success as we did is just an awesome feeling. So the purpose really for the show today was to showcase the fishery the restoration of the fishery in Kings Bay. Um, in the past four or five years, you, five years ago, you couldn't catch anything in there. There was catfish and ladyfish, that was it. Um, the redfish were gone, the snook were gone. Um, you know, a lot of the predator fish just weren't here because there was no bait. Now that we're bringing back the bait, we're bringing back the predators to keep a balanced ecosystem in the, in the waterway. Got one. That little guy. A little sticky stick. Oh, little bass. So I knew that it was gonna be a better bite when that tide got up and we could really reach these places that we need to get to. And after our third or fourth pass, fishing the same areas really, we started catching a couple fish and from there on out it just got better and better. The canal we're fishing here, this is one of our last canals that we've done as part of our phase one restoration, which is gonna put us at 83 acres. So we'll have um, 83 acres of, of all the, mostly canals done at this point, uh, getting um, the, uh, all the vacuum done and the, the planting. So as we come through here, you'll see some cages with the grass on them. Uh, this is one of our last ones to do. Then phase three, sorry, phase two is our next phase and we're going to be doing the, the canals further out the river and that's another 89 acres so uh, we're about halfway through what we want to do but our phase one plan will be complete by july of this year the last time i was in this canal was probably two or three years ago i would say and you couldn't even see bottom and no grass just a big algae on the bottom and now you can see the see the bottom see the grass starting to grow and uh, it's definitely better habitat and we're starting to see a lot more little bass and brim and shiners and things like that. So it's a huge help what these guys are doing for us. Um, we're gonna go down this canal and see if we can catch a big one. Got one. Nice one too. Watch yourself. This is a big, good one right yeah, here. There you go. Oh, nice fish. Man, Larry, growing up as a kid when I was 10, 12, 13 years old, I remember I had a little canoe with a trolling motor on it, and you could come down these canals and just catch 100 bass like that a day. And there for a few years, we weren't seeing that, and now it's really making a comeback, and just some really healthy fish, really yeah, thick fish. No doubt. Got one. Oh, nice little fish. Oh, that's a nice fish. Mm -hmm. Fatty right there. Chunker. Like I said, you usually don't catch a lot of big five, six pounders, but these two pounders are just plentiful. Mm -hmm. A lot of nice fish. Oh. 
Yeah. Biggin. Biggin, oh, son. Oh, I mean, a freaking hammer. A man fish right there, Brandon. It's the one you've been looking for all day. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, baby. That's what we're looking for right there, boys. Yeah. That is a freaking toad. <laughs> there you go. Ditch pickle. That's the kind of fish we're looking for right there. I mean, these are just healthy fish. This is a four, four and a half pounder. Absolutely choked the jackhammer, but Christian River, trout, redfish, bass, catch snook all in the same day. I mean, it's just awesome. This is beautiful fish. Man, what a fish. That'll get your blood pumping right there. Got one. I got one. I got one. Double, double header right there. That's what I'm talking about. Hell yeah. Come here, baby. Not a little bit nicer one there. That's a nicer one there. Story of my life. That's what I'm talking about. Brandon's is nicer. <laughs> yeah. Pretty little guy. They're clean, you know. 29 inch red on a chatterbait earlier and a <laughs> large mouth this afternoon. Absolutely. After a great day on the water and catching a couple nice redfish, some trout, a bunch of bass, when me and Larry doubled up on those two bass right there at the end, it was just like a bittersweet feeling to end the day on a double header after some amazing catches. Got him. Oh, that's nice a better one. one. Double header again, back to back <laughs> doubles. That's what I'm talking about. Oh yeah, nice one right there. That's a pretty fish, yeah. That's what I'm talking about right there. Not too, too bad. Another double. Another dink. That tide finally got up here and we're yeah. able to get in this canal and yeah. those fish are kind of setting up. It's mm -hmm. really different on these tidal fisheries for bass. I mean, there's not a lot of places you can do it. The Potomac and places like in Louisiana and here, of course, I mean, there's the lakes around here might hold some bigger fish over there in Lake Hernando or Henderson, uh, Lake Russo, but the numbers of fish you can catch here on Christian River are just, right. I mean, you can catch a pile of fish. This, this right. is a two, two and a half pounder and just catch right. a bunch of fish like that. Yeah, you won't catch a redfish with your next cast either. <laughs> Man, what a day. I mean, to start the day off with nice big reds and some trout, then ending it with some bass. I mean, all in the same, we're 200 yards from where we caught those big redfish. <laughs> no, that's crazy. There's really not many places like this. And it's just a mm -hmm. special, special place we have. And what the people at Safe Chris River have done to our fishery and to help our fishery is just absolutely amazing. Yeah. Honestly, Brandon, we're, we're very proud of what we've done. Um, we didn't expect it to be this good. Um, we were just hoping to help and it's just exceeded all of our expectations. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, five years ago, our bay was in just a really bad spot, the water quality issues. And to see what they're doing and what y'all are doing to help us, it gives me the chills, honestly, the goosebumps, know, just because I'm seeing what's happening to the people on the East Coast and South Florida and just very mm -hmm. thankful for what we're having yeah. here happen to our bay. And this has been a grassroots effort too. It's, we've, been, we've started this thing from a local nonprofit called One Rake at a Time, where we were literally raking the crap out of here yeah. by, by hand to a full operation, like you saw down at Shatz Island, yeah. of getting all this stuff out of here. Well, I can't thank you enough, and it's been an awesome hey, day. Thanks, Brandon. Yes, Appreciate sir. it. I was really proud today that we were able to showcase the efforts of Save Chris River in restoring the waterways. We're only half, not even halfway there to our project. We still have another 89 acres to go, um, and we're able to see you know, some fantastic results. What I really want everyone to see is that water quality issues can be fixed. There is so many people that are down saying places will never be the same again. But I can tell you, Crystal River can show you the difference. When I was a kid, I'd never thought it would be to what it is today. It's probably better now than before I was born even. Um, back in the 1980s and things like that, when there was no development, the water clarity is that good now. So other estuaries can be fixed and you just have to put your mind to it, get the right people behind you, and have the right techniques. If you wanna make a difference on our fisheries, our estuary, and our river, y'all go check out savecrystalriver.com. Your contributions make what you saw today possible. All right guys, so on today's episode, we had three key baits. A 3 8 ounce jackhammer chatterbait, 
and I had a kicker crabs on the back of this. It's a little bit fatter bait, but it has the tail movement really, really good. So the vibration is key, but what the biggest part of this bait, it's a bigger bait and is more buoyant. So it allows you to fish that shallower water super slow with that chatterbait. I was barely rolling that thing through the grass when we were getting our bites. Our second combination that you guys saw me switching through a lot was a Z-Man diesel spin spinner bait. Eighth ounce jig, diesel minnow in Houdini colored, the same way, super, super slow. Both of these rods are TD Soul, seven foot, medium action, with a Daiwa Coastal. I had this spooled up with 30 pound diamond braid and a 20 pound diamond illusion fluorocarbon leader. This is a new fluorocarbon from them. It's super limber and easy to tie, but it's super, super strong. In those rocks, you're not getting a lot of chafes. I didn't have to retie one time today. Last but not least, the Snake Locks head by Z-Man with a kicker crabs in the deal color. When we got around those potholes and really had to slow down, this was a key bait for me. All of our gear today was a 7.6 medium action TD Soul Rod by Daiwa paired up with a 3000 BGMQ, 10 pound diamond braid, and then the new 20 pound illusion fluorocarbon. If you're interested in any of this gear that we use today, go check out sodiumusa.com.